Ambulance emergency. Tell me exactly what's happened. <laughs> When the most serious emergencies strike, the ambulance has eight minutes to respond. I'm going to, sir, sir, I'm going to tell you what to do, right? 999 calls doubling in London over the past ten years. I'm not asking if you're an atheist, I'm asking, do you want an ambulance? In the control centre, every single one needs a split-second decision. Who needs an ambulance quickest? It's so critical that we try and cut him down. It's the only way that we're going to be able to try and save his life. And who must wait? An ambulance, please. Kathleen, the ambulance will not be coming to you tonight. No, Kathleen. The phone, the phone, the phone. Kathleen. From the moment a call comes in. It's been stabbed in the stomach. Looking for any ambulance for a 16-year-old who's had her hand slashed by a machete. Another stabbing. Crews race to save lives. Seconds feel like minutes, minutes feel like hours when you're waiting for an ambulance. My name's Peter, all right, we're going to look after you. I'm going to give some very, very strong pain medicines. But that's for your female who's fallen. I need to know if he's breathing or not, it's really important. He's as drunk as a thousand people. The NHS is under unprecedented pressure. There was a hanging, there was a four-year-old that's fallen 20 foot, and now we've got another double stabbing. You're the Queen of England, so why have you dialed 999? As London grows by over 100,000 people a year... You've overdosed, fella. You've overdosed. Ambulances are struggling to keep up. The situation is now critical. Someone's taken my Echo 231 for something else. Another cardiac arrest, another deceased. Please, God, be an ambulance. Be an ambulance. This is the story behind the sirens. <laughs> Through the eyes of the London Ambulance Service. Did you see what you were shot with? A shotgun? I think, essentially, we should say that she's gone. It's time to stop. Sometimes it's just not easy. But you go on to your next job. Marvellous. Is there somebody else so you can help? Oh, London has woken up. Here we go. Now listen carefully, I'm going to tell you how to do resuscitation, OK? Place the heel of your hand on the breastbone in the centre of the chest. So if you're atheist, would I still love you? Frederick, that's not, that's not the point of the call. No, and I'm, and I'm asking you a question, Frederick. Do you need an ambulance? Shouting is not going to help this situation. Please tell everyone to calm down. This is very important. We need to help her. It's Friday night and the start of a long weekend in the control centre for A-Watch. I need to advise you that the 999 lines are very busy. Just tell them to be still and wait for the help to arrive, OK? Of the two and a half thousand calls for help they expect to hear tonight, they know the number fueled by drugs and alcohol will be double the normal rate. Tell me exactly what's happened. I believe it's a drug overdose. Is he awake? He's awake, but he's thrashing out. Is he breathing normally? No, very erratic. I do cocaine and MDMA. Wow, no, no. Okay, let's go. The overdose call is in Brixton. South London based crew Dan and Donna are immediately dispatched. If it's a weekend and it's a payday and it's full moon, then you can be guaranteed to see absolute carnage, drunk, drug fueled problems but that can be quite interesting, and I do quite enjoy that, to be honest. Dan and Donna are a mile away from the patient. With reports that his condition is worsening, an advanced paramedic who's specially trained to deal with overdoses is also sent. We're based out for Papa 61. Uh, ETA is going to be about five minutes on this call. ETA, five minutes. Thanks, Richard. He's reported to have a very fast pulse and actually be quite hot as well. And both of those conditions can cause um, problems with kidney damage, uh, muscle breakdown, and can actually make you quite unwell. Rich is on scene in six minutes. Dan and Donna arrived in four minutes. Are they coming out now? Yeah, they're coming out. Okay. 
What do you know? 21 year old, he was um, shaking quite a lot when he got first in. Yeah. Possibly a small fit. Fine. We've packed him with some ice for now. Yep. Um, we brought his temperature down to 40 points. Just... Fine. You're on the back of an ambulance, buddy. You're okay, but we just need you on the bed. Okay. Look at me, okay? Nothing's going to happen to you, okay? We're trying to help you. Relax, just relax. Calm You're down. all right. Okay. You're all right. Don't phone up my mum. We're not your mum. I'm not your mum. I'm trying to help you, crew. okay? We're in an ambulance. <laughs> don't talk to you. <laughs> just peel it, peel it that way. Just relax. Take your hand off yeah. me, please. Right, Let go of him. Just relax. All right, OK. Let go. Let go okay. of my shirt. You're going to get a little scratch, buddy. All right, it can take a little while to work. All right, relax. Calm down, OK? Right. We're just trying to help you. Good man. All right. All right. The clubs are beginning to close, but the Friday night party is still in full swing. She can't even walk. She can't walk. Yeah, she's like, uh, she's very, very drunk. So I've got a very good friend of mine. We went out for a few drinks tonight, and I'm a little bit concerned that maybe her drink was spicy. What's your name? Do you know what your name is? Yeah, he, yeah he's not making any sounds. First response paramedic Andy is on his way to a call outside a kebab shop in East London. So we've just been dispatched to a young lad who has got facial injuries after being robbed. Hello, mate. What's your name, fella? No, Ali, Ali, Ali. Ali, my name's Andy. Mate, I went to get a donut kebab and I got donut. Oh, no. <laughs> I got donut. Oh, shit, man. Do you live around here? No, I live in Essex. I come here especially for that. You donut, came man. all the way here for yeah, a kebab. For a kebab and I got kebab. <laughs> Can I just have a little feel of your head? Is that all right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's all that's swollen. A, yeah. Ali, it's going to be a trip to hospital this morning. Yeah. All right. Andy operates alone as a first response paramedic. Twenty-four-year-old Ali's condition needs to be closely monitored, and this requires an ambulance. Thank you. Could I arrange some transport for this gentleman to hospital, please? Over. Open your mouth for me. Have you broken your nose before? What? Have you broken your nose I before? I think so, man. But not yeah. really like me that way. Yeah. Right. I can box it, really, so... so... you had a bit of a wonky nose to begin with? Yeah. Yeah? What actually happened? They went, yo. And the moment they said, yo, oh, I just knew what it is. And I turned around. They go, what you got for us? You know, the guy come running. He just backed me so hard. <laughs> my car <coughs> fell out. My car keys fell out. My glasses come off, I mean. My watch and they were fighting, the watch come off. Everything come off. You have to probably my boxing didn't come off. <laughs> Chuck just around the corner, dude. All right. Whoa. We'll get you sorted. Hope to find my watch. Oh, yeah. What watch is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, mate. How much is that? No time to talk What do you do cool. for a living? I'm a wholesaler, retailer, ladies' fashion. All right. With the bridging loads, accident claims. Now I'm up the position land. So you're a little entrepreneur? Yeah, man. Yeah. See so you on Dragon's Den in a few yeah. years, like piles yeah. of cash in Hello, front of you. Hello, old Dragon's Den, man. <laughs> <laughs> you get me? I think uh, transport has arrived, Ali. Yeah. I've got to see back in the hospital. Yeah. 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 All right, Ali, I'm going to leave you in these guys' That's capable right. hands, mate. You, all the best, all right? Look after yourself. Oh, Cheers, guys. Uh, how are you feeling there, Ali? Oh, oh, good. I was like, this good in my life. <laughs> Last year, the London Ambulance Service treated over 31,000 victims of violence. And at the weekends, casualties rose by 50%. I think we have a distorted view of London. We see the violence and we see the result of it. But I don't think London is more or less dangerous than any other part of the country. It's just as an ambulance service, we, we know about it and we hear about it and we see it. Can we put a little bit of, mu a bit of oxygen on your face, just a little mask, just to help? Yeah? In Brixton, the MDMA overdose patient has been successfully sedated, but he still risks overheating, so they must take him to hospital for further observation. Red base, Alpha. Upper 6-1. Are you doing medical to King's College when you're ready, please? Yeah, go ahead, mate. So we've got a 22-0-year-old male. He has a pulse of 160. He has a temperature of 0.2. He's got ETA's only about five minutes, Rog. Yeah, Rog, right, so that's all being done for you now. You're in the back of an ambulance, yeah? We're going to take you up to the hospital and we've let them know you're coming. 
all right? Because you're very hot, your heart's going very quick, and you have any reaction to the drugs. He took a disliking to me for some reason. He's, he's very, very paranoid. Um, I think he thinks that um, we're his mother, um, which isn't ideal. You're not in trouble, you're fine, OK? But you need to relax and trust us, yeah? Can you do that for me? Good man. Good man. ETA, um, ten seconds. Thank you. You're calming down a bit now, aren't you? Yeah, that's good. You'll feel a bit better in a minute. You take drugs at your own risk. You can't stop someone wanting to do that. We will always be there if someone does overdose or takes something the wrong way and it all goes horribly wrong. But it shouldn't get to a point where it impacts on another people's health because you overdose and they need an ambulance. Oh, a bit of... Hey, when we erupt into the room and hear the sound go boom. I look at my friends sometimes and what they get up to and they're still out every week getting pissed and I'm on a Friday night, you know, in an ambulance going to them and people my age and that can be a bit surreal sometimes. You like this song, don't you, Donna? Come on. I've never heard this song before. It's Katie B. How have you not heard this song before? So this job has definitely made me more mature. I might play my Joker card, Donna. No, we are as the shift draws on, the aftermath of Friday night partying shows little sign of letting up. There are 19 crews currently treating drink and drug casualties. But not all calls are the result of tonight's party. Are you having contractions? A lot. OK, is this your first delivery? Not first. OK. Can you have a look at her vagina and tell me if you can see any part of the baby? No, not really, but she's had a water broke. Just reassure her that help is being arranged. Keep her lying down. We're coming as quickly as we can. I know that she's screaming. I know she's in pain. OK, but she needs to try and stay calm. All right, and take deep breaths in. At this moment, there are three women in labour currently on the line. And ambulances have been dispatched. OK, I'm going to tell you how to deliver the baby just in case, OK? Raise your head up with pillows, but don't sit up and do not go to the toilet. Call handlers are trained to deliver babies over the phone in cases where it's clear the baby won't wait. Listen to me. Yes. Right, yes. can you go on? Right, is the, is the, the whole head is out, you're saying? Yes. Is the whole head out? Yeah, 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 the head's out, the head's out. Yeah. Right, listen to me. Push hard now to get the baby out, please. Right, as the baby delivers, it's going to be very slippery, OK? So just be careful oh, and support yeah, the baby's yeah, head and shoulders. Yeah, the baby's out, the baby's out. Right, the whole baby out. Yeah, is the baby, baby crying or breathing? Yeah, the whole baby's out, yeah. Right, OK, so is the baby crying or breathing? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. All right? Yes, yeah, yeah. OK, congratulations. Is it girl or boy? I don't know, I don't know. I can't, I don't know. You don't know? I'm in a shock. You're in the shop. Well, well done. The ambulance should be pulling up outside now. Okay. Okay. Congratulations. I'll leave you with them. All right. Thank you. Bye. Is that the ambulance crew with you? Okay. I'll leave you with the ambulance crew. Thank you. I'm going to leave you with them. Okay. Good luck. Lots of babies tonight. A call has just come in from the police in East London for a man who's been reported unconscious. First responder, Andy, is sent. Hi, mate. He's just got up. Oh, is he? <laughs> uh, he's been here for an hour, mate. Sh shivering. He's got very cold. The sun's turned up. He's not been saying his mental health uh, medication. Oh, OK. My name's Andy. What's happened tonight? Nothing. Nothing? How come you're outside? No, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. OK. It's very cold. Very no, hot. Do you very feel hot. Do you feel cold? Very hot. Very hot? Very hot. OK. Very hot. How long have you been feeling hot for? Hot. 1985. Sorry? Since 1985. Since 1985? 1985. What year are we in? I don't know. You don't know. OK. How old are you? I don't know. All right. Can I do a couple of checks on you? No. No? Why no, not? Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Can I check your blood sugar? No. No? No. Does he have any medical problems? Yeah, he's a mental health patient. OK. Does he have any other medical problems? Um, bipolar. OK. Unfortunately, I'm very limited in what I can do right now. I think 
as you probably know anyway, the best course of action we could pop him back down to the hospital, yeah. I think. I think that's what he needs. Yeah. Just a little update for you on this very, very um, much a mental health job. She's going to need to go to hospital, so we are going to need a vehicle at some point. Over. There are currently no available ambulances in this area. Andy's mental health patient must wait, but he's starting to get restless. You have to stay, I'm afraid. We try to keep you home. I'm in the jail. That's it. Nobody's looking at putting to put. Go on, big man. Nobody's looking to make you go to jail. Go on, big man. Go on, big man. Go on, big man. Yeah, what we're trying to do is get you somewhere safe and somewhere warm. Then you can. If the patient continues behaving erratically, he risks being detained by the police to prevent him harming himself or anyone else. Finally, a private ambulance arrives, one of 18 that have been specially contracted tonight to ensure they can safely cover the whole of London. Hello, guys. I think the police are going to do most of the work. I think the more people around him, the, the more difficult it's going to be to manage. Over the last year, there's been a 15% increase in the number of mental health calls the London Ambulance Service attends. It's desperately sad when people are in that situation, and we try our best to help them as much as we can, but really, the only choice we have is to take them to hospital, which isn't right, it isn't where they should be. A&E is not a suitable place for people who are having an acute mental health crisis, but it's the only avenue open to us at three o'clock on a Saturday morning. It's... Something's missing with our mental health care at the moment, and I don't know what the answer is, but what we're doing at the moment isn't working. We'll put a plaster on it tonight, and then next week it'll be the same story again. Hello, what's happening there? No, nothing here. He's not unconscious, he's just drunk. Why do you need an ambulance? He's drunk. We've had a gentleman here, he's passed out in the toilet. Yeah. He has shit himself. It's probably a very good reason why that they didn't prescribe dog worming tablets to you as a human being as a type of medication. Pete is in charge of the team dispatching ambulances across West London this weekend. He read on Google that these dog worming tablets contain an active ingredient that helps people with anxiety issues. Asked the doctor to prescribe them, the doctor said no, so he went online and bought them online and he's been chewing them for most of the day. Is he still anxious? Well, he's not so much anxious as petrified now that he's done something to hurt himself because of eating his tablets all day. So his anxiety's gone through the roof now? <laughs> so he's gone through the roof. Oh, my God. I'll tell you, if you wrote a book, they would put it in the fiction section because they'd never believe that this stuff happened for real. Emergency ambulance, tell me exactly what's happened there, please. Right, well, it's a comedy night and somebody, one of the audience members, has literally just passed out. And then she's in the front row and she's just completely unconscious at the moment. All right, I'm arranging that as I'm speaking to you. North London-based crew Abby and Paul head towards their second job of the night. OK, how old is this person who's passed out? Um, she is 25. 25, is she awake now? She's dipping in and out of front of What's her name? Laura. Laura. So, what do you reckon that Laura's been up to? I don't know. Passed out, unconscious, in and out of consciousness, unable to verbalise, responding by moving fingers. Could be any number of things, couldn't it, I suppose? They arrive four minutes later. The woman has now regained consciousness. Right, Laura. Yeah. What we're going to do, my sweet, is we take you down to the ambulance. Yeah. Because you've had a faint, yeah. 
we want to do an ECG to make sure it's not your heart yeah. that's causing any problems and yeah. that. Just like, to I'll, see how you I'll are. stand we'll next to you, oh, we'll have a hold, yes. and we'll stand for a moment. Oh, don't worry about that. Distort, distort. Oh, bless her. Like, genuinely. We've I all done it. I didn't oh, know. Sweet. I, like, fell oh. in between my legs and I was like... Oh, don't oh, be silly. Well, you, well, whilst we're on the stairs, Laura, if you feel unwell, just yeah. sit down. Yeah. Just sit back and yeah. sit down. It's lucky I put my uh, wash on, wasn't it, Ernie? You're going to need some new trousers. Oh, Laura. Did I pee on you? I picked you up. We picked you up. We just picked you up and just sprayed everywhere. So people <laughs> thought it was part of the comedy routine. <laughs> they genuinely yeah, you did, have to, say, you you did have to say this isn't part of the routine. Did you have to say this isn't part of the routine? No, the bloke no, did. They Everyone was whooping and hollering. They thought you were great shit they'd ever seen. You should have had those gardens from it. Laura has only had one bottle of cider tonight, so Abby and Paul need to explore other underlying causes for her collapse. I genuinely reckon they could have been my underwear. Your, your underwear? My, 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 my
It's in here somewhere, isn't it? I get worried sometimes going to these jobs because the assailant is probably still around on scene and it's your job, you know, to attend the patient, but also watch your back and your crewmates. And then it should be your first left. There have been a few occasions where I know that I've gone in on my own to go and help a patient, full well knowing that there's someone there that could probably cause me harm. Um, so it is scary, very, very scary sometimes. Hold back until police are on scene. Um, Before making uh, progress over. Yeah, all received now. Oh, no, there they are, the police. Do you guys have a, a bit of a story of what's gone on at all? Unfortunately, not at the don't. moment, no. Our colleagues upstairs do. OK. With, okay. Oh, oh, OK. Is he inside? Apparently so, they're, they're all upstairs. The attacker has fled, leaving the victim bleeding on his mother's doorstep. He doesn't look very well, does he? I'm sorry, he's got about two and a half centimetre wounds, maybe three centimetre wounds to his thighs. OK, wait, please, that's all right. I don't think you're very well at the moment, because your, your pulse is kind of... Should we get you in this chair? We'll take you down to the ambulance, and then we'll get you sorted out. So just hold on for a minute. Yeah, one, two, three. How long ago did it happen? Um, uh, an hour ago. And has it been bleeding all that time? Yeah. Has it? Stabbing someone in the wrong place will definitely kill them. In my life, it's so unfathomable that someone could do that to another person. But it happens often. And I have to question whether these people understand the consequences of their actions. Right. My name's Ned, by the way. All right, man. Nice to meet you too. I just need to put a really small needle in your arm. So we can give you something for the pain as well. Oh, just stay nice and still for me, mate. A quick scratch coming up. I grew up in like a tiny, tiny village in West Dorset and the worst thing you'd ever come across down there is that, you know, a neighbour's had a fight, someone's been kicked by a cow, someone's fallen into a slurry pit. So the idea of going to a stabbing where someone's actually been stabbed by someone is completely removed from my normal life. But now it's part of my everyday life, it seems. That's okay. Fox Trot 230, can you show us blue to uh, St Mary's, please, as a major, major trauma? Um, he is saying that it happened an hour ago from before we arrived. So if you think about it, it could be quite potentially quite dangerous if you know he's been bleeding all that time. If you imagine pint glasses, right? All the blood that's been trickling out over the last sort of couple of hours, how many pint glasses do you reckon it would have filled up? Just a rough guess. Five. So you reckon it's possible that it might have filled up about five pint glasses, you reckon? Yeah. OK, well, I'll listen to you. Yeah? Just going up the ramp now, guys. In London, 800 crimes are committed with knives every month, injuring over 300 people. It's becoming more common, and certain elements of society have this habit of stabbing people in the backside, which... It's not so much to do with the injuries that it, that it brings out, the stabbing, but the victim will end up having to wear a colostomy bag for the rest of their life. Is it what I call bagging, isn't it, Michelle? Some sort of called bagging. They bagged someone. It's not nice. Not nice at all. In the first half of tonight's shift, the ambulance service deals with 44 assaults across London. They must balance coping with these alongside every other emergency that comes in. I'm in terrible pain. Every time I'm over, I feel like I'm going to pass out. All right, Donna. <laughs> just to advise you, there might be a delay because we're holding calls at the moment. I'm waiting in the cold and I'm not used to this weather. It's fucking cold in here. I'm dying. Right, so is there anything actually wrong with you that you require an emergency ambulance? Yes, I'm cold. I'm going to die. I'm really cold. I'm shaking. Ah, ah. Tell me exactly what's happened. She just falls down and drops down on the floor. And I can't listen because I got a backpack. Right, OK. Ah. An ambulance has been requested in south-west London. Dan and Donna are sent to help. How have you ended up on the floor today, Margaret? I went out to go on the toilet. Yeah. Um, I didn't reach the toilet. I reached the door here. OK. I think I had some kind of fit or something. Why is, what what makes you think that, Margaret? I was just totally out. Okay, okay. How much have you had to drink today? 
Not a lot. Not a lot? No. Okay. okay. All right, let's sit you up and get you on the bed then, okay? Hands again, Three. Well done. Ah, Stand up, Margaret. Ah, well done. Okay. 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 Have you had this pain in your side before? No. No? So, if you had to give it a number out of ten, if ten was really bad and zero was no pain, a nine. So, really, like, crippling. Okay. I'm going to get your tissue. Your nose is coming. There? It's sick. Oh, yeah! Well, I'm pressing there. It's sick. No, here. Where I'm pressing, yeah. There. See, if it's causing you that much pain, we should really pop you up to hospital, really. Come on, then. The London Ambulance Service receives nearly 100 alcohol-related call-outs every shift. On a Saturday night, that number doubles. Margaret, do you drink half a bottle of vodka every day? No. No? So is it I just... Re I recently come out of rehab. OK. And basically, I drink about twice a week. A lot of the stuff we do is routine, mundane stuff. And you think, why are we doing this again? Why are we going to this person who's fallen over? But what's the alternative? We can't just turn around and tell people who've been drinking they can't have an ambulance. <laughs> partly because we'd be out of jobs and there'd only be about four of us sitting here every weekend. But also partly because people who do drink become vulnerable. Do you know what, I'm I'm oh, good. I like you though, you me. Well, of course. It's why I'm in this job to help people, Margaret. Um, OK, let's play another game. How old do you think I look? Show me your teeth. Is that an important part? It's yeah. <laughs> how about my teeth, then? What about Donna? How would you think Donna, our care bear in the front, is? 25. 23. Oh, bang on for me. And <laughs> you pretty, took eight years. Pretty close to Donna as well. Yeah, you took a few years off my life. Just, just a decade. Well, there you go, Donna. <laughs> Dan! When I put my card drags on, I got my face I on. bet, yeah, I bet you look I don't lovely. 50 odd. I bet you do. Oh, shit, yes, yes. So we'll go this way. Halfway through the Saturday night shift, and the control centre is taking calls at a rate of 250 an hour. There's been um, reports of a fight left the square at Burger King. A male with lots of blood. Head was hit on the floor, apparently. She has, in three gulps, next a bottle of vodka before she came into our premises. The only one got off the pub is he's head, he got punched. Right, so he's been assaulted? Yes. And was there any weapons involved, Doctor? Uh, a lady went to glass him with a, uh, like, hit him with a glass. Okay. And is he awake? Uh, no, he's not. Wait, well, everyone, shut up so I can hear what you're saying on the phone. Ambulance crews are currently dealing with nine people who've been assaulted, including two stabbings. So we've had stabbed in the leg. Yeah. We've had a bottle or slashed across the face, a stabbed in the back. Yeah. Tonight it's been a bit of a stabathon. Yeah, there's another one just come in now actually. Where's that one? Hello, um, can I get ambulance here? Someone's what been is stabbed. The address of the emergency. So ho, so ho, someone's been stabbed. A first response paramedic is already on scene and an air ambulance team has been dispatched, but they'll need backup. Half a mile away, ambulance crew Ned and Nick have just become available. Another stabbing? Got another stabbing. Is there any serious bleeding? Yes, a lot, a lot. It says central stab wounds in Soho. Is the attacker still nearby? Oh, chill out. If... Listen, please listen to the questions I'm asking you. Is the attacker still nearby? Still there, they're still, they're still there. there. Yes. Yeah. I don't even know if I fit in mine. I think I'm probably too fat to get my stab best now. It's a four-minute journey to the crime scene. The police have moved in to cordon it off. The patient has already had his wound dressed by Stuart, the first paramedic on scene. Lower back here. Okay. I don't know how deep it's gone. I don't know what was used. It was a female. Just a I'm going to peel it back and it was a knife. Yeah. Let me see it. Okay. There is a fairly significant amount of blood. Ned. Ned, yep. Ned. So what was, is this the only one? That's the only wound that I found, yeah. Oh, that's nice it. One. So it's already been packaged up by the oh, paramedic I've seen previously. Sorry for that, sorry. But I'd say there's there's got to be more than 500 mil in his trousers at the moment. In fact, every time he sits down, it's, there's oh, more and right. more and more. And that's just come down from there. Appears to have just dribbled down, yeah. It's all quite 
manic when we got here. Like I'd literally got. I got, got sucked right into this. I was on another call. Oh really? Yeah. I said, come to the car and tried to dress his wound. I had to get the police to help me put the dressing on because he wouldn't sit still. He was pushing that and shouting. Not worth my life, this job. Hello. I've been doing this job for 13 years down West End. And it's just the worst for stabbing now. Well, this is our second one in a row. Eh? Uh, the job before this was a stabbing. I wish people would just punch each other out. Why didn't have to use knives? It's just crazy. The patient's injury is potentially critical, so he's taken to a major trauma unit on blue lights. He's the fifth stab victim of the night. I can remember though when, if you got a call for a stabbing, it was a performance. Now, if we do a shift and we haven't had one, it's a comment of note. Right, so I'm holding one, two, three, four, five category A calls, all we need in ambulances. Gonna have to take Alpha 230 off that pot two to go on the uh, haze. Calls are still coming in at over 200 an hour, and in the west of London, there are currently no ambulances available to deal with them. <laughs> I am dragging Charlie 450 from the other side of London to try and help this really poorly man. And I'm also holding an uncovered category call and there's no one anywhere who can help. That's it. It's busy in Dan and Donna's area too, but they can't help clear the backlog because they're tied up with a patient who's homeless and has discharged himself from hospital. We can't take this out here. We've got to take you up to the hospital to have that done, okay? I can't do that in this ambulance with you today. His cannula needs to be removed. Definitely doesn't want to go back to Mayday. That's fine. We'll go to George's. Do you drink alcohol, Wayne? Yes. You had any alcohol today? Oh, no, not really. No? I had some money. Castle, Mobile Studio 2. Uh, currently holding an uncovered category called in Uxbridge. Also holding category calls in Hayes. Heathrow, West Drayton, and another one in Hayes. If we literally have nothing available at all, no cars, no ambulances, no motorbikes, no volunteer responders, we'll just put our general broadcast, anybody available, please, to assist with an emergency call and hope that, sometimes pray, that somebody offers up. General broadcast, all mobiles. General broadcast, all mobiles. Talk routes three and four, currently holding a category A call. What's this you're drinking? This last not going to try look something else. You've diluted that with something. What's in there? You can't be having a party on the ambulance drinking. I'm not. It's orange juice in there. Okay. If I was... right, are you ready to go? We're going to head off to the hospital. Yeah. Just because he's pleasant and nice with being drunk and whatever. There is a fine line between that and actually taking away from the jobs we should be going to. He needs to get his cannula removed. That needs to be done in hospital, really, but it doesn't need an emergency ambulance. And while we were on scene there, there were two uh, general broadcasts over the radio. So you do then think sometimes, as nice as it is to sit with him chatting, actually, there are sick people out there that need us more than him. Right, step this way. Sit. Well done. That's it. That's it, this way. I think the government's out of order at the moment. They've cut back on the ambulance crew. And they've cut back on the police force. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a big lover of the police force, but they're a necessary evil. I um, mean, we need them. We need, we do need them. This chap here is going to assess you and then he'll come and sort out taking this out for you and getting something to eat for you, OK? I'm I'm going to go and look now to find out what they've got, OK? Do you have any sandwiches for patients? 
There's not, there's not been anything half past eight. No. Bread and jam. Yeah. They have no sandwiches, but they've got bread and jam. Would that be okay? No? We don't like bread and jam? He doesn't want bread and jam, but he's quite content now. I think he's sleeping. He could have been delivered here by other means, maybe. But he needs the cannula removed, and it's a place of safety for him, so we've done the best we can. He's here, and if he's hungry, and they can offer him some food, then what's a sandwich? Nice, isn't it? It's just nice to be able to help do something at least. I can't offer him somewhere to live or change his life, but a sandwich is a sandwich. So. That guy is taking the piss well and truly. So he's refused to let them take out his cannula because he knows he's not an idiot that he'll get found, he'll have to go to hospital to get his cannula taken out. So we've now taken him to St George's at a cost of £450 thereabouts to the taxpayer. So that's a very expensive sandwich, isn't it? He didn't get and a sandwich. Then, well, whatever. But I don't necessarily... Yeah, I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying I understand. So why do you feel sorry for him, then? Because I, I do. He's homeless, he's hungry, and he feels that's his only way to get himself something to eat. <laughs> I'm going to go take the crutch back. Well, for, when uh, you do what? When you go patient. take that crutch back, why don't you give him a big I'm hug and a pat on the back this and tell him, well done... And, and, and give him the receipt, or actually an invoice, for the, for the cost to us. When we could have gone to that 19-year-old having a fit, or the 20-year-old unconscious. You're not upset with me, are you? I still disagree with you, and I think you shouldn't feel sorry for him. You should feel sorry for the people that we've let down, that we haven't been able to get to, because we've been tied up with Mr I Want a Sandwich. Uh, Do you feel sorry for them? I didn't say that what he did was right or that he should be no, treated no, know, over anybody just, else. I you, just said I understand. Yeah. And you feel sorry for him? I feel sorry for his circumstance. OK. Circumstances aren't pleasant, are they? But, you know, it could be worse. It could be a whole lot worse, yes. What is a whole lot worse? Tell me. Working with you for a night shift. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> It's Sunday night, the final shift of the weekend. My neighbour's just come down and her finger's completely trapped in a toaster and it's all pretty horrible. She's got a finger trapped in a toaster? In a toaster, yeah. Is that the toaster one? <laughs> I'll leave off. I mean, how do you even get your finger trapped in a toaster? She must have giant hands. Do you know why you got feelings in your heart? It's like a game of roulette. You know there'll be all these jobs waiting for you and it's just luck of the draw to which one you're going to get. After a run of mundane jobs, it's nice when you push that button and you get someone that does seriously need an ambulance. Right, come out of the way. Dan and Donna have been sent to treat a taxi driver who has been involved in a fracas. The quick story is, guys, was that... He, was he knocked out? No, 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 no. So what's, what's happened is he's assaulted the taxi driver. Can we, we, leave, we leave with you? I've requested police for you because he's getting a bit... Yeah, sure, sure. But I, I, yeah. I think that might just need some glue on there, or, or maybe a stitch. All right. Sorry. Terry would rather drive himself up to hospital, which I said is, is fine. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. You know okay, his, Terry. His, his, his numbers are, are getting better. Okay. Um, because he's got all his stuff in his cab and doesn't really want to leave it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. It was a bit chaotic, wasn't it? I know, but don't, that is what I love about this job. When you get on scene, it's just all chaos is broken loose, isn't it? You never know what you're going to be faced with. No. And, and, and that's exactly that. 
And I love it. It is the reason. Absolutely love it. Okay, no, okay, I know you okay, I know you fought fought with the Germans, okay. I'm not disputing that. Okay, no, okay, I don't think some of these people are Germans, sir, okay. So what so what I'm asking you, sir, is what is exactly wrong that you need an ambulance? In the control center, a call is in progress from an elderly patient who lives alone. No, no, sir, you can't wait until they come because you haven't told me what He's already been visited once by an ambulance tonight. The crew decided he didn't need a trip to hospital. Hello, sir. This is London Ambulance Service. You can't just hang the phone up, OK? OK, you're saying you need some help, so I need to know what is wrong with you to send you the help. OK, your heart is hurting. Thank you very much. OK. OK, could I confirm the, your address once more? He just hung up again. Why does he keep hanging up? Because the man claims he's experiencing heart pain, an ambulance is dispatched. Dan and Donna leave the scene of the taxi driver assault in central London to attend. OK, so the help is on its way to you now, sir, all right? OK, thank you very much. You're not going to die, all right? You just need to take your tablets in the morning in three hours' time. Why do you call ambulances? Because you call us a lot, don't you? I call a lot because I have pain. I got pain in my heart. OK. You were here before, about half an hour ago. We weren't here half an hour ago. We had a different crew here before, another, didn't another you? Another, another ambulance crew, yeah. Oh. At 7 o'clock this evening, they were here to see you, weren't they? Oh, no. So you was in hospital yesterday. Was it an ambulance that took you there? Yeah. Yeah? OK, I've got to pop these ones across your chest, OK? Mm. Just looking through this gentleman's uh, patient care plan we've got here, um, he is a frequent caller okay. to us um, with chest pain, non-traumatic chest pain... So I've those away for ..and me. medication queries or catheter problems. He used to be an artist. So that's oh, a self-portrait of him, yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? The patient is visited by a carer three times a day. Can I just okay. have a listen to your chest? Is that OK? Have you had a cough recently at all? Yeah. You have? Just one more thing I want to do, if that's OK. Uh, just say 99. Uh, say 99. 99. Yeah. Just clear your throat. Just go <clears throat> like that. Yeah. Say 99. Oh, yeah. OK. We've checked you over, and from what you've told me and the way you've described things, OK, I'm not worried that it's your heart. This is my heart. This is my from my heart, Vic. You are leaving me alone. Mm. And I can die and no, you know what But we can't know. sit here with you all night, can we? You see, enough of us, you shouldn't worry too much. I wanted to take me to hospital back. Why did you want to go to hospital? To be sure that I will be all right when I check my but, face. But I'm telling you, it's not your heart. It is my heart. I think we'll have to agree to disagree on that, won't we? Hmm? If there was anything wrong, we wouldn't be discharging you here. We'd be taking you to hospital. Everything's fine. Try not to worry, all right? If we go, yeah. are you going to call another ambulance? I go, oh, oh, you are leaving me here. Hmm. Oh, my God. Yeah? I don't know what to do. His situation is sad. Bye-bye. He's got no friends, he's got no family, he lives on his own. There should be another system in place that he can call for when he gets anxious. What system's that? There isn't, and that's the problem. London's very demanding. It's a demanding place to work. 
11 o'clock on a Sunday night. You're not getting hold of social services. You're not getting hold of the ongoing care teams. These people that have got ongoing medical problems can't contact their social workers. They can't contact um, Meals on Wheels. They can't get hold of district nurses. And that's where, we're fa that's where we, the NHS, is failing. When I started 15 years ago, I thought I was coming here to make a difference, to save lives and, you know, deliver babies and do CPR over the telephone. The reality, unfortunately, sometimes is starkly different. But then every so often, something will come in, a call will come in, and you'll end up thinking to yourself, yes, this is it, this is what we came here to do. This is why I do what I do. Right, tell me exactly what's happened. Basically, my wife, she's pregnant, and now she's too much in contraction pain and bleeding. She's bleeding? Yes. And how many weeks her mum's pregnant is she? 21. 21 weeks? Yes. Raj, you'll receive premature 21 weeks uh, and crown it. Thanks. I'll um, get there as soon as I can. Thank you. The crew is already attending what could be a premature birth, and they've requested extra support from advanced paramedic Rich. 5.50, good evening, this is the APP desk here. Just to let you know, um, AP61 is 10 minutes away. Initially, with this, I just need to be really calm. Mum will pick up on any anxieties or any worries I have, and obviously I am going to be concerned about her. I'm concerned about the baby as well. Um, but Mum has to be confident that we can help her, that she's safe with us. Um, so overall, it would just be very calm. First response paramedic Kelly has been treating the patient before Rich arrives. Yeah. This is her fourth pregnancy. When I got to her, she was in quite a lot of discomfort. I, was, had, I had her on Entonox, and all of a sudden, water's broke. Right, as well OK. As, as well as blood, and I could see baby's head. Right, OK. She's it, but since the waters have broken, she is in no pain. Yeah, I think let's just go now. Yeah. And then we'll do everything else. What's the ETA to Queen's? Uh, about 10 to 12 minutes. Yeah, right, a little scratch. Can you just... Let him know I'm just going to do, I'm going to cannulate just so I can slow down a little bit and um, warm me if there's a corner. It's fine, just done it. Done. Thank you. So there is a little bit of bleeding, not sure yet what's going on. It might be an early labour, it might be something else. What we can't do in the back of here is monitor the baby because we don't have the equipment, it's specialist. So obviously, I want to get you up to the hospital as quick as possible. The maternity unit have been pre-alerted, so they know we're coming in. Potentially difficult case for them, so we've made them aware. So from the, from my, my colleague, um, large amount of amniotic fluid or shit water, PV bleeding, and what looked like crowning. Okay. All, right? All right. Good luck. All the best. Take care. The mother's condition stabilizes over the next hour but doctors find major complications with a tumour in the placenta. Her baby cannot be saved. Cheers, mate. Pete? That's not good at all. No. Um, so, babies, um, babies die. No one turns up for their day at work wanting the outcome to be the worst outcome for the patient. You're always fighting for the best outcome. And when it doesn't happen, despite your best efforts, that, that's deflating. It does happen, it's part of the job, and it takes a little bit of time to process that and then to move on with the rest of the shift, and we've all got to go back to work, despite what happens. The APP said they're OK, but people say they're OK when they're not. As I left her, her parting words to me were, well, thank you, and I hope my baby lives. And then to be told by the nurse that it hasn't. What I'm going through it pales into comparison to what they're going through. I can't even imagine what they're going through. But you kind of brush yourself off and come in again the next day or go on to your next job because there's somebody else that you can help. And that, help, and that helps just spur you on. But it's sometimes it's just, it's just not easy. It's not easy. I'm going to pop out because 
my my twins were 21 weeks, and it's um, yeah, it's, it's actually hit me a little bit. My wife and I lost twins at 21 weeks last year. Our son and our daughter, Lily and Max. Yeah, it's upsetting. You, you don't let a lot get to you doing this job because you can't. But there will be maybe one a week that that does stick with you and that you do think about. Sometimes it makes you realise why you do the job, but then other times it makes you just want to go home and give your loved ones a cuddle and just sort of remind yourself that there's things away from the job, more important things. Salt beef bagel from Brick Lane. Uh, just what's needed at five o'clock in the morning. That's amazing. Still It's gonna be a nice day, I think. Nice day. In bed. What size bed have you got a double bed or have you got a super king size bed, I mean? What do you keep going on like this king size bed? Do you like a quite a firm bed? Yeah. Do you really? Why wouldn't I know that? Oh, that's weird. You're weird. What are we a man? Now I think I'll get home, I'll get into bed and I'll sleep and then I'll get up and do it all again tonight. What, are you going to do more? Yeah. That's why you do so much overtime, is it? Yeah. I eat, sleep, breathe in. Who's to get alive? <laughs> <laughs> I think being a paramedic is an important job, but it's a job that's changing. It's no longer just going out to genuine emergencies anymore, you know? You are almost a social worker a mental health practitioner, a district nurse, a GP, a policeman. Yeah, honestly, you know, at what, what point do we stop? At what point do we say, no, we can't do anymore? That's out of our scope of practice. This old girl came on the phone one night and she said, I just want to say thank you to you for coming around earlier and picking me up off the floor. You've really done me a treat and I was gobsmacked. All it takes is one person saying thank you, making a difference to that one person will set you up for a night full of nonsense. <laughs>